Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, today I'm going to go around the fruit trees that I put in in the winter. I'm going to see how they're doing, prune off anything that doesn't want to be there and tie in some of the growth that I want to keep. There's not a huge amount to do because um, there hasn't been a massive amount of growth. But I'm going to start with this one behind me. This is an apricot and I think it's doing rather well. So I've got this one in a pot. Um, I forget what size this pot is, but it's over 100 litres. I think it might be 125 litres. That's more than enough, I think, to keep this apricot happy. So earlier in the year, we cut this back and that was to stimulate some side shoots. And I'm gonna fan train this over this wall. So I want two nice branches, one on each side to begin that process and it has obliged by producing two really great branches. Now I haven't got the wires against the wall yet, I've, I need to do that. So I've just got these branches tied to some bamboo canes jammed into the pot and that's just to make sure that they don't wander around too much or, or get damaged in the wind. But I really ought to get some wires on the wall so that I can tie these in permanently. This one here I left to provide the leader. And the reason I did that is because if you allow one or two or three branches to develop with a vertical habit here from the, the top of the branch you've cut, then those below tend to break out with, with better angles. These aren't too bad, they could be better, but it's time I cut this leader out because I don't want it at all. Um, that looks a little bit big for secateurs, so I could get the loppers out, but I think I will cut that with the pruning saw. I've got a nice fine pruning saw here that's gonna make a really nice cut of that. So I, I wanna be careful. I certainly don't wanna come through here and damage that. And I wanna prune these now because there's still time for this to heal properly. It's not a bad time to do a little bit of pruning on the stone fruits. So I'm going to make a, a gentle sloping cut here. So that's a nice clean cut and that should heal well at this time of year. And I'm just left now with those two branches and that's going to be perfect for continuing the fan training next year. Well next I'm going to look at the cherries in the fruit cage. Now these I'm trying to train in a method referred to as upright fruiting offshoots. So the idea here is to have one branch, the main branch, laid fairly flat and from that produce a number of vertical shoots and that's going to pro provide me with the fruiting wood. Now cherries have naturally a fairly vigorous vertical habit and this kind of exploits that, spreads that vigor out amongst a number of different shoots and it's the only way I could think of for training the cherry trees in the small space we've got available here. Um, I could fan train one at the end of the fruit cage, but that would be just, just the one plant. And here I've got a row of five. Not been a huge amount of growth on some of these. Um, there's at least one which hasn't produced any vertical shoots yet. All it's done is produce a large cluster of fruit buds around, around the, uh, the leaf axils there where I would have expected the new shoots to arise. I imagine it will get round to that next year. These are on pretty dwarfing root stocks. They're on, they're on I think, Gisela 5. And the ground here is not great. It's the, it's the worst ground in the garden. So. I think they're taking their time getting their roots down and, and getting established, and, and that's absolutely fine. I'm not in any hurry. Um, some of them, though, have produced plenty of new shoots, and where they've grown, the weight of that is now, they're hanging down, and I need to tie those into place. I might put some canes on here and, and tie them in more neatly later on, but, but for now, I'm just gonna tie into this reinforcing mesh that is serving as our trellis here. I'm not gonna show all five, of course. I'll, I'll just look at one of these and I'll do the rest off camera. 
So here I've got one of the cherries and it's produced some quite nice branches. Now I left this one on because it could be bent into place. These are the correct ones. They're growing up pretty much from the top of this main stem. This one's coming out the side, but as I say, I could bend that into place. Now I'm not going to, I think that bend is a bit too severe and I don't think I really need it. So I'm going to cut that back, remove that one there. But these others, I just want to tie into place. Now I will go through and retie all of this stuff in the winter and make it a bit neater. But for now, one little tie should keep that in place. I'm using this rubbery stuff. It's nice and soft on the, on the, on the uh, wood there. And I'm going to put a few twists in to keep it away from the wire. It's always good to have some material, whether you're using string or a rubbery material, it's always good to have something between the stem itself and the trellis or whatever support you're using. And I'm just going to tack these up for now. Right. I think I'll do that. We're just looking at what we've got here. This is this is the end of the branch when I planted it. So this extension growth is ideal for continuing along this cane. I've got a small shoot there, which might develop further. It's not very vigorous. Um, I think I need to put another tie around this to keep this in place. So let me do that first. having the a tendency to spring up there, which I don't want. Yeah, that's better. Right. So again, this branch could be bent up, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I've got another one here, which is rather better placed. So just get in, in there and snip that off. And this one can just lay down there and I'll tie this one so that it is more vertical. This one I will probably remove in due course actually um, because it is probably, yeah. I, no, I think I'll remove that now. I don't, I don't need it. It would be too crowded if I let that one grow up there. Okay, so and I'll leave that for now. It doesn't it's growing pretty straight along the cane there. Yeah. That'll be fine. So you can see that this is now giving us more or less what we need along here. These vertical shoots at a sensible spacing. This is probably about ideal. I'd then like one or two more here and I would like something from lower down. Now this one looks like it might be a little bit too vigorous. And if I decide that this is too vigorous, then what I will do is cut this back, um, probably fairly low down, and I will leave a, a stub there from which it will regrow and, and hopefully I will get a couple of different shoots off of that. They will be weaker and then I can use those to fill in this space a little bit better. I'm sure I will eventually get a shoot lower down with this stem laid down like it is. I'm sure something will break from below this one but in any event this one I think is going to need to be cut back but I'm, I think I will just see what happens with it but it does look 
rather vigorous and the idea here is to try and control the vigour of these stems. This one is noticeably weaker than its neighbours but I want to let it go for a, a little bit longer before I make a decision like that. I might do this next spring. So the rest of the UFOs are treated exactly the same way. I'll remove any shoots that I don't want. In the spring I did rub off um, lots of the buds that were in the wrong place so I shouldn't have many that I need to cut off. I'll then tie in place the appropriate vertical shoots and that's probably going to be it for this year. I will then look at these again in the spring, make any um, stub cuts that are necessary and then yeah these should be good to go. By that point they should have got their roots established and that of course is the main thing to look for in this first year. They've had a bit of a hard time um, with the weather and also some of these were absolutely blitzed by um, aphids. One of them in particular they hounded it for weeks and weeks and, and every week we were jetting the aphids off. In fact several times a week um, during the the worst period. Uh, some of the worst aphids this year that, that we've had actually. Strangely they weren't too bad on the broad beans. We had them of course and we took all the tops out and in that way got rid of quite a few of the aphids but on the fruit trees this year it's been horrendous. I don't normally bother too much with the aphids but they do cause lots of distorted growth and we were quite desperate to try and protect these vertical shoots. It's no good if they're all wonky because they're going to be there for a while. I mean eventually these will get pretty high here and then they will have to be cut back and new growth will come up and, and that's how we will be managing the, the vigour of these plants um, when, when we get to the sort of maintenance stage. At the moment we're just training and tying in but later on we'll be cutting these back uh, or a proportion of the branches each year and allowing them to produce new more productive growth but yeah these are looking they're looking reasonable at the moment some are looking pretty good others haven't developed too much but hopefully over the next couple of years we'll get this working. Well here I've got um, a young apple tree. Well it's not actually as young as it looks because this is one we had to move when we did the garden renovations. We were training this as an espalier and we were on the second tier or maybe we were working on the third. I can't remember but this was in an overgrown area and we dug it out and we had to cut it right back when we did so and the idea here I think is just to lay a couple of these branches down like a step over but I don't want it low down because then the fruit is in an awkward place. I'd like this much higher up. So it's put on all this vertical growth and that is not what we want and it's also got what one two three four five well six main branches and we don't want all of those either so I'm just looking at it to decide which branches to lay down. I, I rather like that one on the right hand side and I think this one here would be absolutely fine. So I need to get these sort of tied down so that they will stay in place a little bit. I'm just going to use these stakes actually. I'll just bang those in. I think it would be better maybe to put them at an angle. And then I will tie off from those to pull those branches down. Now at some point I will have to put something in here to provide some more permanent support but I don't need to do that yet. All I need to do is get these branches laid down nicely. So I'm just looking at the levels here. I think that would be fine. So I'll just tie a loop up here 
and then pull that down around the stake. Where's my knife gone? There it is. And then I can tie that off. Yeah. And that will do nicely for now. And probably in the winter, I'll put something across here. I will almost certainly have some um, rebar, some reinforcing metal bar. And I'll put some spikes in the ground and then a horizontal bar. And then I'll be able to tie these into something really solid. Doesn't matter now. It could just be a, a thin bamboo cane, but eventually, I hope there will actually be some fruit on here. So these will be laid down. We've got a, a little bit of extension growth is going to be needed. I don't think these are going to be growing much more this season. Um, let's have a look. Well, these are still actively growing, but I think this one is not. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to get much, much further growth this year, but I will only allow that to come out another, I don't know, eight inches or so. And then we're to the path. And similarly on that side, doesn't need to grow much more to get to the fence. And then it's a case of pruning this just as you would for a cordon, spur pruning this main branch here. Most of the growth will be vertical and it'll be important to keep that cut back during the summer. So again, I'll just tie a, a loop around that. And then and I can pull that down. Nope, that's not happy there. So these are now close enough that when I come to tie them in properly, they won't mind that little bit of bend that I'm going to have to put on them. If you let this stuff get a bit too thick before you bend it over, then there's a danger that you might break it where it gets, you know, a little bit too stiff. So the rest of this growth needs to be dealt with. I'm not going to waste this growth entirely. I'm going to start spur pruning this. So when you're spur pruning, which you would do on cordons, the summer pruning is ever so simple. If the wood is coming off of the main branch, as this is, you take this three buds above the basal cluster. So you can see this cluster of tightly packed, well, hopefully you can, see this cluster of tightly packed buds around the base that is the basal cluster then i've got three proper buds here one two one on this side and three there and then you cut that just above that top bud now in any subsequent regrowth from this point anywhere on this stub here will be cut back to just one bud above the basal cluster so that will have to be done quite regularly with this. I mean, this is a, a vigorous shoot. It may well regrow this year, in which case I will have to just keep pinching that off. But otherwise, later on, I hope that we'll get our first spurs developing there. Exactly the same with this branch. There's the basal cluster, one, two, three, and that can go. Uh, the same here. And well, this one's coming from lower down, but the same rules basically apply. I will spur prune that. 
Now this one is a bit of an oddity. This is a short length, and I don't know if that will show on the camera, but that is terminated in a fruit bud. You can always tell the fruit buds, they're larger, more rounded than the growth buds. And this is exactly what happens on these short lengths of wood at this sort of time of year, they will show a fruit bud here. And if this piece of wood was coming off the main branch, you could leave that. Um, but this whole branch is actually coming from below and I don't really want that at all. So I'm going to take that whole side branch off there and there's one on this side I'm going to remove as well. Now I've had a little bit of woolly aphid on here. You might just be able to make out this white residue. I've just been rubbing that off by hand. You do have to be careful with that stuff because it can cause a fair bit of damage if you if you don't control it. So there's nothing more to do here. And in fact, there'll be nothing to do in the winter except tie this into a more permanent framework. And I won't have to do anything now until next summer. So now I'm going to look at the plums and cherries that I've got um, growing around the fence here. Now, it's quite a mixed bag. I'm not going to cover all of them. That would be a very boring video, but I'll just look at a couple here. Um, now, this one is early transparent gauge. At the start of the year, this had no side shoots whatsoever. So we headed that um, a little higher than necessary to try and encourage these lower branches to develop with wider angles. Now, this branch here is actually very nice. I quite like that. We've got two candidates here to keep. I mean, what I'm ideally looking for is a nice Y shape here to begin the fan training. Now, some of the others started with um, side shoots that we could take to form that Y. So they're a bit further ahead. We're then looking to take branches off of those Y shaped scaffold branches. But this one had nothing. So I need to look at this now and decide what I'm going to keep. Now, obviously, I'm not going to keep this one in the middle. I'll just cut that off now to just to get it out of the way. Um, I will need to cut this back in a moment when I've decided what to keep. So I've got a silly little side branch here. It would have been nice if that had developed because that would have paired perfectly with that one. But I'm going to have to keep this one. Now it's not perfect. It's, um, it is a little bit high and it's quite stiff. But I think that will, that will bend quite happily at the right sort of angle that I need here for my first branch. And then probably in the spring, I will shorten this branch and that's going to encourage further shoots to develop to start filling in the framework here. So all I want to do at this stage is just tie that in place and then I need to pick one on this side and oh, there's not much in it, but I'm going to pick this one at the top. He's a slightly more vigorous branch. So I'll tie those in place first and then I will cut out the others. On this side, I want to pull this branch in a little bit towards the fence. Um, it, has, it has come out at a slight angle. The other thing I want to do is just tie this one in a little bit more vertically because this one here on the right hand side is so much more vigorous than, than this. So now I've laid down the right hand side. If I raise up the left hand side, this should develop far more quickly than the other and hopefully we can balance the vigor there because you don't want one side of the tree to have all the vigorous growth and there'd be nothing on the other. So if I, if I tie it about there, and a few twists, yeah, that, that will be fine. And now everything's in place and looking okay. I can cut off these other branches. I don't need, I don't need any of those. I'll cut that hard back on there. Um, well, they're not doing anything. And with the pruning saw, I will take the top of this out. 
just pull these leaves off so I can see what I'm doing. And through that. Right. And I'll just clean that up with the knife. So that's fine and at this time of year that's going to heal very nicely. I mean you really don't want to do this in the winter. So late summer is fine for, for pruning the, the stone fruits but after that, after you move into autumn, it's best to leave them then until after bud break in the spring because this wants to be really well healed before we get into the cold and miserable weather um, which is quite likely to bring on the diseases to which these fellows are rather prone, things like silver leaf and canker. So cutting it now is absolutely fine, but in a few months time this would be a bad idea. Well in amongst the pumpkins here I've got another plum. This is Coe's Golden Drop. Now this one did have the start of the Y-shaped framework when it went <coughs> excuse me, when it went in and I just need to look at this now and remove the excess growth and just tie in place that which we want to keep. So the first thing I need to do is remove this. This shoot is coming straight out from the main trunk. This is of no use to me. And these side branches here, there's one on each side, neither of those is desirable. I'm a little bit surprised that these did shoot up since I left those other two in place. So I'm going to cut those back to the main stem. Now we're making these cuts to the stem. Don't cut it flush, you cut back to the branch collar. I'll just show you that. It's a good tip if you're not familiar with it. So if I were to cut this flush with the stem, it would leave a very large um, wound and it wouldn't heal very well. You can see perhaps on these that there's this area of callus here and cutting back to that, this is known as the branch collar. If you cut back to there rather than to the trunk, this will heal much more quickly. This is a much smaller wound and this is ready to seal over the edges there and heal this up. So that's the point at which I want to cut here, not not back flush. And this is going to heal quite happily now. So the idea now is to take these initial Y-shaped framework branches or scaffold branches and look to tie in some handy growth to start building up the frame. And ideally you want one or two branches below and two or possibly three from above to do that. Now, now this piece here, that's, it's come out at an unfortunate angle, um, but that I'm going to tie in as the extension here. We had another branch coming up here. Now this was damaged earlier in the year and so I've cut that back. You can see that it's, it's regrowing here and I will keep that new branch here that I'm going to use to start filling in this part of the framework. This one here though, uh, I don't know, I, I could get rid of it or I could train this one at a bit of an angle here, I don't know. Actually what I think I might do is bend this one down and actually remove this, um, not entirely, I will cut this back in a similar way as with um, spur pruning an apple tree. So I think I will cut that back to here 
and allow that to potentially bear some fruit but I think I'll just train that one in as my main branch there and then later on up further up here I think I'll try and take another pair of branches off one above one below this job is always a little bit tricky the tree very rarely obliges by giving you branches exactly where you want them and you quite quickly diverge from the the sort of training pictures that you might find in a book but you've got to work with what is available the buds and shoots that the tree provides so it's just a case of making the best of it um yeah you know, i mean this this is going to work and the only objective here really is to start filling out this fence with branches and trying to avoid too much vertical growth because vertical growth is really far too vigorous and it won't be fruitful so we're laying down the branches here we'll bend this one over and tie that one in going across the fence rather than than up and yeah that that could be a useful branch it would have been better had this one that um was broken had that um regrown more vigorously but the growth that was there i think wasn't fit to replace this one this is a better placed branch so yeah that's what we're going to do on this side we've got a strange situation here i mean these have come off at odd angles it's not quite what i want so that one i could allow to continue up that cane and pushing that one down and this one down that's not a bad idea because it's always very difficult to get a branch to come off from underneath with any sort of vigor and because these have been allowed to grow a bit more vertically then this is more vigorous than it would otherwise be so I can bend that down there tie that one to the cane and then I'll be able to take some branches off of here later on there is this weedy branch here um, now that has gone and grown behind the behind the trellis it's quite young I might get that out without snapping it yeah I think I will leave that in place to start with and we'll see if this develops anything useful this branch here that isn't useful so I will cut that back and I don't know about that one um, that's, that could be tied along the bottom I'm tempted to do that I mean it's coming out at a bit of an angle but I am tempted just to tie that in for now this will never be a vigorous branch growing where it is but there's the potential for it to be fruitful um, it just wants to be bent back towards the fence a bit so having cut away the branches that we don't need here all i need to do now is just tie the ones that are left in a suitable position and again i can come through and retie and tidy these up in the winter but i want to get these bent down to more or less where i want them It's much better to do this sort of thing when the branches are still quite young and flexible that one just needs tying back i don't want to set this too low because it will never grow anymore if i set that too low so for now i'm just going to lift that up slightly and when this branch has grown a little bit more then i can lower it back down What have I done with the knife? I think about there would be fine.
Yeah, that's not too bad. This one we need to this one we need to bend over here. I think. nice thing about this reinforcing mesh as, as trellis is that um, this rough surface, the, the ties really bite into that and they don't tend to then slide up and down. So this, this should stay in place here quite nicely. I'll just have to keep an eye on that to make sure it doesn't start running behind the trellis here. That, that can be really rather awkward. But that's all right for that side. So here I want to bend this branch down first. I think a couple of loose ties for now will be fine. And again, I won't tie this too low for now. I think somewhere up here, allow this to grow on with a little bit of vigor. before we then tie it down in place later on. Yeah, that'll do nicely. This one wants to come this way. I certainly don't want to leave this vertical. So one tie here. This is rather weedy, but I think it might now start to develop a little bit better now we've laid these other stems down. And then finally, I'm just gonna pull this one in a little bit. And one loose tie should do that. Um, Should keep it in place well enough for now. Well I've got a few more trees to do here but they're going to be done in exactly the same way so there's no need for me to film all of those and this will probably be it for these trees until at least next spring. I, I won't need to cut these again this summer and when we get into autumn any regrowth um, from anything I have cut today I don't want to cut that later in the year so I will leave any regrowth and deal with it in the spring and that's just to minimize the chances of disease so I'm going to get this finished this afternoon with a bit of luck it's coming over a little bit moody so it might get rained off but that is all for this video thanks very much for watching and bye for now